an effort to ensure that they had extra credit, that the government would guarantee the credit and that some of the classification norms which have been a big bone of contention which kept small companies small given extra leeway now to grow and yet be classified as MSME so that all the benefits that accrue because you're a small company still continue to accrue to them. Here's what the finance minister said. In a moment from now, I'm kick-starting the live and exclusive Big India Today virtual brainstorm. There is a fund of fund being created uh, for infusing about 50,000 crore as equity into the MSMEs. This will benefit those MSMEs who have the potential and who are viable. So we sp spoke about those who are standard, we spoke about those who are NPAs and stressed. Now I'm talking about MSMEs who may be doing viable business and who need hand-holding because of the situation thanks to the COVID. So this fund of fund with a corpus of 10,000 crores through mother fund and daughter fund framework will be able to provide the growth potential MSMEs greater support and this we think will help MSMEs to expand their capacities. The collateral free automatic loan for MSMEs which is being provided. This will give facility up to 3 lakh crores. 25 crore outstanding for those MSME units for whom 25 crore is the outstanding loan or 100 crores whose turnover is will benefit from this. These loans will have a four-year tenor and there will be a moratorium given for 12 months. These are going to be 100% credit guaranteed over uh, as a cover given to banks and NBFCs on principal and interest. So this is going to be available till 31st October 2020. There are no guarantee fees no fresh collaterals required. So I guess this will benefit 45 lakh units so that they can resume their business activity and also safeguard jobs. The Prime Minister has said that he will use this crisis and try and turn it into an opportunity by pushing through serious structural reform on land acquisition, on labor laws, on administrative processes to make it easier to manufacture in India. But this is also a time of deep crisis. What are some of the top voices of India Inc. making of what the government has said so far in Nirmala Sitaraman's press conference and in the Prime Minister's address to the nation? Joining me on this broadcast, I want to start by welcoming Venu Srinivasan chairperson of the TVS group. TV Narendran is the chief executive officer and managing director of Tata Steel. Shrikant Sumani is the chairperson of uh, Ceramics Limited, person of the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Council of CII. Jai Panda in the extreme right corner will represent uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party and give us a sense of the thinking in the government about what is to come and what's been done so far. Sanjay Kapoor is the chairperson of Sona Comstar, works closely with the MSME sector. Preet Dupar is uh, with the management team of IKEA in India, what are international companies making of what's been done so far and whether this will move manufacturing and production into India. So I want to start by asking Venu Srinivasan about what we heard from the finance minister in her press conference and the prime minister's larger thrust. We've been hearing opposition voices, they're saying that, you know, this is not enough, the government's got its priorities all wrong. However, we've also seen MSMEs react with some relief, saying that this will give us some elbow room to ensure that we can survive and be standing at the end of this crisis. Venu Srinivasan, what are you making of what we've heard so far? I think it's a very bold move to support the MSMEs who would otherwise have gone into a cash crunch and folded up. They would not have been able to restart the companies at the end of May after being through such a drought. So this was very essential and it was very bold. The government has backstopped the loans 
and given them breathing room, elbow room, redefined the size of MSMEs. I think all in all, this will, we must understand MSMEs provide leading out to service MSMEs, which have also been not classified as MSME. The manufacturing MSMEs employ 70% of industrial labor and account for more than 40 or between 40 and 50 percent of exports. So it's a very important part of our economy and this is a very big boost for them. TV Narendran, uh, Tata Steel and several other big companies work closely with the MSMEs in the value chain. What are you making of what the government has said so far in the press conference today and the Prime Minister's larger thrust about trying to push through once in a generation reform? I think mean, the industry has been asking for it for some time and I'm glad that the Prime Minister said what he had to say yesterday and today the Finance Minister has followed through with some specific announcements. Uh, for Tata Steel, the MSME sector is a very big customer base as well as a very big vendor base and I know that they've been struggling quite a bit on liquidity issues, on permissions to open and I think over the last few days we've seen that many of them have started getting permissions to open and today's announcements I think address a lot of concerns that they have. I've been speaking to some of them since the finance minister's announcement and I think many of them are extremely happy with what has been announced. They feel that many of their requests have been addressed and I think it's a good way to start these uh, reforms that the uh, prime minister announced yesterday. Shrikant Somani, you work very closely with the micro, small and medium enterprises sector. One of the concerns that CII had and other industry chambers have had has been that uh, a lot of these companies will simply be crushed under the weight of the pandemic. On the back of what we've heard from the government so far, how many of the companies do you think broadly are likely to make it? To what extent does this provide the kind of stimulus, the kind of support that you were hoping for? I think it's a very, very bold move indeed and very much appreciated that uh, uh, we've, uh, we've seen that the MSMEs through this COVID crisis have been suffering very badly as far as liquidity is concerned. And many of them, maybe some of them have already gone under, but many of them would have. But this uh, package will definitely give them scope of reviving and surviving. I think it's a very, very uh, a welcome step. Uh, one wouldn't have expected that the government has gone beyond uh, the imagination of many of us by uh, giving this uh, uh, package to the MSMEs. But Chandrajit Banerjee, the naysayers are saying that this doesn't really solve the demand side of the problem. That the key challenge right now is to improve sentiment, instill confidence and to ensure that there is demand. Now you've given companies extra credit but will they avail of extra credit facilities given the fact that they have to ultimately repay that credit unless they know whether the people wanting to buy their products will enough and more companies you wanting to produce. Give me a moment as I okay. go on, go on, Mr. Hello. Yeah, so there are a few there are a few things that we were demanding. There are a few things that we were demanding. We were talking about that needs to come in from, from as far as the MSME uh, gambit was concerned. Number one, big, big demand was let the payments to the MSMEs be done. And I think that has been, uh, the, uh, the finance minister has been very clear to say 45 days by government and PSEs. I think this is in a huge step. This is this itself makes, uh, the, uh, makes the MSME a lot more comfortable today. And uh, that's, that's one. Second, if you see this 100% guarantee for ru 3 lakh uh, crore rupees, this is a great move to take, and, and I and, and I don't see a, and I don't understand why your naysayers would not also nod this very important uh, liquidity which has been infused in. And we, on top of that, you are also bringing in that you are giving benefits to the small and medium enterprises. You are incentivizing to uh, them to grow for the first time in seven years when you are changing the definition of the small and there was no incentive for them to grow because you grow out of the benefits that you are giving here you are changing the ben definition of the msmes which really means that they can avail as they uh, avail the benefits as they grow okay so this and, and one, one can really look at us uh, so this this really makes it a very comprehensive 
a comprehensive package for for, for the MSMEs to be. Uh, she, uh, the finance minister mentioned of six different things for the MSMEs, and I see that each of those six different things to be of very, very, very unique uh, help to the MSMEs for them to not only be able to navigate through this uh, next two quarters, which are going to be difficult, but then to uh, actually start contributing towards uh, uh, towards uh, towards the economy very strongly. Mr. Jai and, Panda, and, give and, us an and insight also, into the uh, thinking uh, uh, in the government. Know, uh, because the biggest, the crying image at this moment is of migrants walking mm -hmm. home and everyone's wondering when will a package be announced for them. The government has promised that it will come, but it wasn't in the first tranche, maybe in the other three tranches. Why have we started with micro, small and medium enterprises and why play this out over four days? Why couldn't it have been a budget style announcement one day? You lay out all of what you intend to do. I think first of all that is incorrect what you have just said, because uh, please remember already 38,000 crores have been paid out, including 1,500 rupees to uh, 21 million construction workers who are registered through the JAM Trilogy. Now, these are all the migrants that we are talking about. Uh, I mean, of course, there are more, but I'm saying 500 rupees to, to tens of millions of women and so on and so forth. A lot has already been done earlier to this that you ought to recognize. I think the big thing is, today's announcement was the first tranche of meeting the PM's vision which he spelled out yesterday that the total stimulus including what's already happened and what is now going to be done to add up to 20 lakh crores which is a stunning 10% of GDP. Now that is absolutely really really bold. Now what you've been hearing other speakers mention today right now is that this first tranche is bold and it is. I think it started off on a very very good, uh, good wicket. A lot has been done for migrants, will be done more in the coming days because that's where the purchasing power is hit. And uh, the DBT, the direct benefits transfer to farmers, to migrants, to women is all going to help boost the economy. But if you think about what's happened today, it's really stunningly bold and this is only the first tranche. If you just take the two biggest items of today's announcements, the 3 lakh crores of government-backed collateral free automated loan disbursement to MSMEs. Now this is precisely what they were asking for. I've had many video conferences with uh, chambers of commerce and with MSAB representatives and this was a great demand apart from the, uh, the payment of dues that Chandrajit Banerjee was just mentioning. Now think about the, the huge difference that this makes to their viability. This is a much better way of ensuring their ongoing revival and keeping people employed rather than giving direct employment subsidy. Because if you give an employment subsidy, that's like giving a person fish, but giving them this kind of, uh, of fiscal uh, help to get the, to get the, uh, the activities revived is like teaching somebody to fish. No, so, so can I counter by saying, difference. Mr. Panda, while the intention is noble, we already have seen through the data released by the Center for Monitoring of Indian Economy that 110 million people have been rendered unemployed just in the month of April. The government already under the National Disaster Management Act has said that it is illegal for companies to be firing employees. We know that that's not being kept in spirit. Many thousands, lakhs of employees have been rendered unemployed and therefore what's the guarantee that the companies won't take the benefit of the credit that you're giving them and still go ahead and start firing employees? How do you ensure that? Uh, let me answer that as follows. Um, apart from this 3 lakh crores that has been given for uh, loans to be issued, the other very big development is that government procurement for projects up to 200 crores each will now be only domestic Indian tender. This will help these small and medium sized Indian companies who were not being able to compete. Now, I have had lots of interactions as I told you with business people across the country including small and medium. Their concern is just the opposite of what you just pointed out. Their concern is will the migrants return soon enough because we are getting ready to open the factories and of course now with today's announcement uh, uh, things are going to start buzzing and they will need the labor. Now, if you think that these companies will take the money and uh, they will operate their companies without labor, that's not realistic. And I think that's just unnecessarily being suspicious of business, which is the mindset we should leave behind. That's good. It's good to hear Neta speak like that. Neta has been saying this for a while. I wish the bureaucracy would also feel and act on that impulse. Trust business, let them do their job. Unfortunately, many in the administrative services don't typically tend to do that. Uh, Sanjay Kapoor, as somebody who works closely with the MSME sector, to what extent do you think the 
fiscal stimulus that's been announced, the credit guarantees that have been given, will help the company stay alive in the midst of this pandemic? Well, I think, uh, you know, from my perspective, this is a great survival uh, measure. And I think the first step to any uh, budget or any, uh, you know, measures is survival. And uh, what the government has given is very encouraging. In fact, in the Auto Component Manufacturing Association itself, we'll see 40 more percent of our membership move to MSNE status, which will really help them in terms of, you know, the government-backed loans. The fund of funds is an excellent uh, way to uh, bring liquidity into companies that are that find it difficult to find liquidity. I think payment of, um, you know, government uh, uh, government payments to MSMEs in 45 days is an excellent measure. And Jay just mentioned uh, the 200 crore uh, Indian MSMEs for tenders. I think more companies will apply for these tenders. I think this will spur more companies to go for government tenders, whether they be in defense or in other, other areas. So I think it's a great first step and it's a great measure for survival. Preet Dupat, let's also hear from an international company like IKEA. What uh, do you think this package and what we've heard so far in terms of the signal on land reform, labor reform, what does that do for a company like IKEA and their investment outlook towards India? Sure. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think I'm glad you kind of brought that broader perspective of, of you know, as a long-term investor and a large investor that's looking at investment in India. Um, I think um, um, what, what this step is actually very important. I think we've all been waiting for a, for a stimulus. We've all been waiting for a stimulus that actually addresses the most vulnerable. Uh, you know, for, so for sure the first stimulus package that came with uh, you know, cash transfers and food. So I'm, I'm also glad to hear Mr. Panda say that you know, this will continue, that there will be more, because for sure there is a need to protect firstly the most vulnerable. Um, and then I think this is a great survival step also for the MSME sector. Uh, it's a good step. It will prevent uh, you know, bankruptcies, uh, uh, introduce liquidity into the system. The revision of the definition of MSMEs is also a good, uh, you know, good step to be enable them to scale up. Yeah? Um, and then I think the question then is to say, how do you then move to the next step? As how do you then create the confidence? Or, you know, in the consumers, how do you create the demand in the hands of the people? Because will the companies avail credit? How will you get business back on track? I think that still is. Okay, let question. me put that question then to Jay Panda because that's a good question. Unless the producers have some guarantee that there is demand to uh, for people to consume the product that comes out of a factory, will companies want to be availing credit? Because the big thing that everyone's looking out for is confidence and demand creation. What does your government, Mr. Panda, intend to do to try and address the issue of demand, creating demand, ensuring the people feel comfortable, they feel that they'll get their salaries next month, therefore they go out and spend and don't cut back on non-essential expenditure? I think that's a great question and that's very, very relevant to, to the issue that we are discussing. So that is why, uh, from Prime Minister Modi downwards, the government's focus right from the beginning at first been on the bottom of the pyramid. I mentioned the 38,000 crores direct transfers. But you remember that entire package a month ago was 1.7 lakh crores, which went entirely to the bottom of the pyramid. Also, the appeals by the government and urging businesses not to lay off people ensured that, that they still had spending power, they were still getting their salaries. And the government was in the meantime working on the package which has today been issued. So there is spending power in the sense that has not been disturbed as much as it would have if uh, the government had not requested uh, firms to not lay off as well as not made those DBT transfers. Now, when this 3 lakh rupees, the 3 lakh crore rupees comes up, remember something, businessmen, entrepreneurs do not take loans to keep that money under the mattress. They take it to put to good use. So there is rural demand has not been hit as badly as one would have worried. Were these earlier steps not taken? Now, you have a concern, correctly so, but how quickly can we get all these things up and running? I think the steps taken today, particularly that 200 crore uh, cap now for uh, no global tenders, is a huge opportunity for MSMEs. This is a blue ocean. But market do you have any numbers on how many such tenders are issued, which are less than 200 crores, but are global tenders, and now they'll be India only tenders? Uh, I don't have a number yet, but uh, you know, if you just think about it logically, it is bound to be huge because there are all, all government projects are not in the thousands of crores. There are lots of medium and small size projects all across the country. 
and this is something that many MSMEs have been outcompeted. They were just not in the game to to contend for it. So I think it's a blue ocean market for them. It's going to make a very big difference. But let's just step back for a moment and reflect on the fact that we're in the middle of a massive health crisis. There is an invisible, deadly enemy that's lurking in the air. And I want to ask Mr. Narendran on what are your plans and of those in your sector to ensure that, you know, that the, I, I, I sense this urge about let's get back to business. We've been locked in for too long, which is great and it's true. But we also have a virus. So how do we get back to work without ensuring, uh, with, without lining up in a situation where the virus ends up doing a lot of damage and a few weeks later we have to shut shop again? Yeah, so I think it's important to change the way we lead our lives, whether it's in the factories or in the offices. I think all the factories have already taken steps. This what preparations have you made? How will you try and ensure that Tata Steel doesn't become a COVID hotbed, that you try and follow and get industrial activity up and running, but yet ensure that the infection doesn't spread? Well, our steel plants have been operating all for the crisis because we had an essential service. And I'm proud to say that in Junction 4, for instance, we, we just uh, we were COVID free till two days back. And the two cases that were reported were people who came from outside the state. So we managed to run the plant uh, with more than 10,000 workers coming in every day without a problem because uh, there is a discipline, there's a way you get in, there is social distancing, there's masks with everyone, there's sanitization happening. So you can take those precautions. Obviously, you take more time to do things uh, that you took less time for earlier and you take longer uh, in, uh, to do the regular stuff. But I think it can be done, it has been done, and uh, so that's demonstrated. And what we said is in the offices, uh, you come to office within your happen. you need permission to come to office rather than permission to stay away from office. So we're keeping minimum number of people required inside the plant and having minimum number of people uh, coming to the offices. So I think it can be done. We just need to change the way we look at uh, the processes. And Mr. Mr. Renu, you asked at this technology. moment, public transport in many places, especially in the red zones, containment areas, not up and running. How much of a challenge is it to get your industries back on track and yet at the same time ensure that this infection doesn't spread? What kind of preparations are you making? Mr. Srinivasan, the so, so first is to provide bus transport with proper distancing, put a gap between shifts so that the buses are sanitized before taking the next batch back. Uh, we will lose some productivity in the short term, but right now demand is low and therefore this will be more than adequate to take care of the demand we have. Uh, but uh, my request to the Prime Minister and Finance Minister is as we go on and announce further schemes, I think direct uh, benefit transfer to the landless migrant labour should continue for three months. No, but Jai Panda, it's not just to those who receive benefits. The fact, Mr. Panda, is that there are lakhs of people and they are marching from Mumbai, from Delhi, from Surat, from every urban centre who haven't received any benefit. You have in rural India transferred money uh, into the bank accounts of those who uh, were already identified and they've received money. But what about in the urban areas, the landless labourers, the urban workers who haven't been beneficiaries of any government, ben uh, any government support so far? Again, that's not true. Uh, let me point out that one of the most important decisions taken last month was that apart from those who are identified who was on the PDS, for these three months, April, May and June, even those without ration cards will be given rations. Now this is being implemented by the states and so it's not true that uh, those who are not on the system have been left out. And the fact is today, the JAM trilogy is nearly universal. You know, there are still maybe 2-3% of the population not covered, but it's nearly universal. Now. Uh, uh, apart from the money that has gone to construction workers which I pointed out, the money that goes to say for example women in the villages, the 500 rupees to each account or the, the, the extra the Ujwala gas connections that is giving, being given free during this period under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. It, it impacts the same set of people and the same problems of having reduced buying power. Now regarding people trudging home, hopefully that will now not continue for much longer because the trains are being resumed. Large numbers of people have come back to my home state, Odisha. I deal with them all the time. And I think this is a problem that has been rather well managed as far as the pandemic part of it. Now we are shifting gears to manage the economy and have made a very bold start. So let's, let's be a little optimistic. So you almost seem to be in denial about distress. 
the fact that there no, are people who are, you know, when I see some of those images, it makes our hearts cry. The f we had Chitaram Yachuri just before you came on, and he said that 7,500 rupees should be given to those who have been uh, most badly off uh, and ensure that they have some cash to be able to survive. The government at this moment seems to believe it's done a great job and that there is no distress, there is acute distress and that's a reality, sir. No, I don't think the government is denying that there is any distress and I think the kind of uh, attitude that there should not be any impact of the shutdown is, is unreasonable, it's illogical. The whole world has been affected by this, every economy in the world has been impacted and obviously despite the fact that our pandemic has been managed properly and the numbers show it, every public health expert in the world is complimenting India. That's the part I was complimenting. There is no doubt that it has had a big impact and it has impacted the bottom of the pyramid obviously more than people like you or me. And that is why lots of these steps have been taken including releasing millions of tons of food grains to be given to those that do not have ration cards. Now, I do not disagree that more can be done. And uh, as these uh, MSMEs reopen, many of these people, you know, hopefully should be back on the job earlier rather than later. But uh, in terms of what has already been done in, in, uh, in delivering help to the, to the to people who are distressed, uh, you know, don't, don't minimize it. A lot has been done. I agree there is distress and more is being done. It is, I, I deal with migrants day in and day out. And uh, yes, it is, it is tragic to see migrant labor trudging home or as happened in Maharashtra being run over by a train. Uh, but uh, hopefully, as I said, now with the trains moving to get them back, uh, and also remember those migrants who are coming back to their home states are being given 2,000 rupees each in most states okay. to stay in quarantine. Mr. Mr. Banerjee, today's focus was on small, really small companies, micro, small, medium enterprises. What do you know of what's coming later? You know, India Inc. has been saying that you have to take care of us as well, especially the big companies because they are the ones who give the orders to the micro companies and if the big companies start shutting down in a while, there will be a spar in effect. What do you know of what's coming later? So, we have uh, uh, MSMEs today. We have had issues uh, uh, also addressed of, for, towards the uh, real estate and the construction sector. Besides, of course, the NDFCs, which will, uh, and the power discounts. I mean, we must remember all of that. But yes, we need to move uh, because uh, it is, uh, the Im immediate urgency was, as you said uh, earlier, for the migrants, for the workers, which was addressed, the MSME sector the micro sector that was the second i think we do need to come to the, the stress sectors and there are uh, quite a few extremely strong stress sectors like aviation or the hospitality and so on and so forth so we would we would need that to be uh, sort of uh, unshackled as we go uh, go along including uh, very important uh, but there are still as, as i mentioned and i really come back keep coming back uh, like a can record on this, like the dues, say for instance, uh, which accrue even to the large companies from the, go the governmental good dues and the PSU dues, those need to be cleared uh, to the to the largest sectors and, the, and especially now in the next few days, we will look at the stress sectors um, and the large sectors, large large uh, the large companies would also need to be taken care of because that's that really complete unless they are also taken care of the stress sectors are taken care of the chain right down to the SMEs would not be complete okay. and I and I, and so I what I'll do right now is I'll take a very uh, quick break next then I'll really just coming. zoom out for a moment and enlarge the scope of this conversation because one of the key things the Prime Minister spoke about was long-term structural reform. He spoke of land reform, labor reform and administrative reform. Ordinarily these are fantastic ideas. But some reform like labor reform, is this the right time to do it? Secondly, even if we were to bite the bullet as it were and push through uh, these long pending reforms, will they change the investment climate? When there's already excess capacity, will there be more greenfield projects that will come? Will And all these people are the ones who will take those decisions on whether they wish to expand their investment. Will they consider doing that if these uh, land labor reforms are pushed through? And right now there is a crisis, therefore we are pushing through on this reform. But what's the guarantee they'll stay later? Will these be permanent reforms or are they short-term reforms? And if they are, for example, in UP, the land, the labor law has been changed only for three years. If that's the case, will it ensure that it serves the purpose for which it's meant? That is to bring in investment because investors may think, will this reform stay forever or is it just here for a short period? We'll discuss that and more when we come back with part B of this Mega India Inc. virtual brainstorm. I hope you're enjoying this engaging conversation. I'll be back with more on the other side of a quick break. Stay with us.
The new Mi 10 with 108 megapixel quad camera. Pre order now for exciting offers. Xiaomi. Is this my planet? I said no. No to the cheaply made. No to air conditioners that need replacing every now and then. If we value quality and durability, we'll choose wisely. General air conditioners built to last longer. So you use more and throw less because it's our planet. General. What happens when classroom teaching meets hands-on learning? Well, you get to conceptualize autonomous cars, design futuristic bikes, build next-generation rovers, test high-altitude drones, race formula cars, and do much more. Experience innovation, experience technology, experience education at Manipal Institute of Technology. हॉस्पिटल में एडमिट हुए नहीं कि बिल का मीटर चालू और ये मीटर तेजी से आपकी सारी सेविंग्स खत्म कर देगा अरे अब तो करवा लो हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी बाजार डॉट कॉम से महंगा नहीं है पॉलिसी बाजार डॉट कॉम हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस स्टैंडर्ड टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन अप्लाई आज शाम का क्या प्लान है Nothing much. Bye bye. So no. I'm so sorry. I thought that I took flowers. Every time you take flowers, you take them. This time I took. Introducing the Bloom series of fans from Usha, Daffodil, Primrose, Magnolia, Lily. Dahlia is a cool series by the fans. Your house has been filled with love. Usha Bloom series fans. Life is good. वेलकम टू जी स्क्वायर के स्क्वायर यानी घर घर की कहानी पढ़ाई को लेकर लड़ाई की कहानी सर मैं जैसे ही पढ़ने बैठता हूँ मेरे पापा फ्लैशबैक में चले जाते हैं कहते हैं हमारे टाइम में ऐसे पढ़ते थे वैसे पढ़ते थे और सर मैं हार चुका हूँ हार कर जीतने वाले को बाजी कर कहते हैं सर मुझे लगता है आप भी मेरे पापा के टाइम के हो मेरे टाइम में तो भाई जूस है सारे कॉन्सेप्ट इंटरक्टिव वीडियो ऐसी आसानी ऐसी समझ आ जाते हैं टाइम ऐसी चेंजिंग यस बॉस With visualizations, concept learnings, and movie-like videos, Baidu is the best way to learn at home. So, पढ़ाई की लड़ाई को खत्म करो. Download the Baidu app now. Part B: Sanjeev going to group, growing legacies. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has signaled that there will be mega big bang structural reform on the issue of land acquisition, labor laws and even administrative processes. But in the midst of a pandemic, will this have the kind of impact that it ordinarily have, which is to boost investment demand? Will more companies want to create projects in India? Joining us for this uh, Mega India Today virtual brainstorm, we've got Venu Srinivasan, Chairperson of the TVS Group, TV Narendran, Chief Executive Officer of Tata Steel, Shrikant Somani, Chairperson of Ceramics Limited, uh, we've got Jay Panda, Vice President, National Spokesperson of the BJP, Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General CII, Sanjay Kapoor, Chairperson of Sona Comstar, and uh, I want to start by asking Venu Srinivasan about the signaling on long-term reform. Now opinion divided, one of course, we've been waiting for this reform for a long time, but if it happens now, will it lead to an uptick in investment uh, in India? Will it change the morale? Will it change the conditions? Will it give industry something to cheer and look forward to? Well, uh, reforms took place 30 years ago under Prime Minister Narsimha Rao. 
And since then, actually, economy has grown very well, and people have forgotten about further reform. In fact, we went back a big step when we did the land acquisition bill, where we increased the land price for acquisition by six times in rural areas, twice in urban areas, making any new major infrastructure project unviable. Now, this was done on the basis that the transfer price or registration price was much lower than what was actually paid because of black money. Now that with demonetization, black money has gone, the land prices are almost equal to registered value. We need to bring back a parity, maybe for rural land twice, but urban land, even if you get registration value when you sell it, you're lucky. So registration value should be the basis. I think that land reform is crying out. The second land reform is title deed. In India, you cannot verify title deed. So these two things are necessary. When there's a labor reform, we have to do it with the human face. Today, on paper, the retrenchment compensation is abysmal. All of us will be offer voluntary retirement compensation. is much higher. So why don't we increase the retrenchment compensation to a fair level that allow flexibility? Then we will also be quite responsible. We're not going to spend lakhs per employee asking him to go and then go back and hire employees. So you'll be careful to take people and careful to let people go. And finally, Factories Act and the standing model orders. The model standing orders are a travesty which prevent people from hiring. Now if you do all this, we need to come to the top five in competitiveness compared to China, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia and Thailand. Only then can we attract a large number of people who are leaving China, either because Chinese labor has become very expensive and not competitive, or for geopolitical reasons. Mr. Narendran, what's the government's credibility in your eyes on the issue of substantive structural reform? The last time uh, the, the Prime Minister pushed through on land acquisition, he came under immense political fire, under duress from within and without, he had to take back or dilute substantially what he was hoping to push through on land acquisition. Do you think this crisis provides an opportunity because in India typically big reform is only pushed through when there is a big crisis like there was in 1991? Well, I think this crisis is certainly an opportunity and the Prime Minister mentioned that himself yesterday. Uh, to be fair to the government, I think uh, the GST reform, IBC, these have been big ticket reforms which have happened and I'm glad it has happened. But I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, you know, we've been talking about make in India for some time. I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, make these, do these reforms and get investments into India. I've been specifically saying it's a great opportunity for the states in the eastern part of the country to also, uh, you know, look at this as an opportunity to attract investment because a lot of pipeline workers are back in the eastern states. And there's an opportunity to do reforms and attract investments and create jobs in these states. So, there probably is going to be a recalibration of the workforce. There's going to be more technology adoption in the West and South and North. The data is going to be expensive. And at least I think there are opportunities to invest and create more jobs. And overall, I think for the country, we can leverage the fact that we are rich in many inputs and we are potentially a very large market. So, no, but Shikan, so Mani, the challenge is this. Industry already says we have excess capacity which is not being fully utilized and therefore even if these changes are made on land, uh, making it easier to acquire more land, will it lead to a spur in investment? Will domestic industry have the appetite, the desire to go out and start new projects at a time when they are already struggling for survival? I think it's a futuristic view and the Prime Minister has rightly said that we have to make India future ready and therefore these land reforms etc will come in, come, uh, come in very handy for investments to flow in. So therefore we can't, we can't make a judgment on today and tomorrow. I think it's a, basically after the COVID situation what happens and I think these reforms will come in for investment just as much as what we've seen in the earlier uh, years when the investment, when, the, uh, when India opened to um, uh, you know, the reforms, the industrial reforms. No, so Mr. Jaipanda, the, the last time your government tried to push through, now all of industry we've spoken to so far, welcoming your ideas or your suggestions, but the last time you came under pressure, you weren't in the BJP at that time, so not you personally, but the party that you're with came under pressure, they diluted what was being done originally on land acquisition. There will be a political blowback. The Bharati Mazdoor Sangh is upset. We know that the opposition will make this an issue. You will be accused of being heartless. And therefore, 
what's the guarantee that you will stand up and push back and not repeat what happened earlier so uh, this relates to something you asked a little bit earlier also as to whether this is the right time to do labor reforms the reality is that labor reforms are overdue by many decades all the panelists on this show uh, ladies and gentlemen will agree with this because uh, india has incentivized the use of uh, automation where in fact everywhere else in the world people use labor human labor uh, and that is the, this this is the kind of inverted incentivization system we have built in our regulatory environment so the the blunt answer to your question is there will never be a, a perfect time to do labor reform it should have been done many decades ago but this crisis is the perfect opportunity because all these large numbers of lakhs tens of lakhs of units that are closed or only partially operating need to get back up to speed as quickly as possible and anybody who's been in the in the business of creating jobs hiring people in india in the private sector will tell you that they they used to be scared of hiring people because of the hassles involved with all the red tape now because of the relaxations which have been tried out in several states uh, the existing plants should have no difficulty in uh, in uh, getting their payroll back up quickly without that fear of dealing with red tape now your question about whether investment will come in unless these are longer lasting is a more valid question i think we have to see the results of these uh, changes kick in and they should kick in within the next 2 to 3 years no but it doesn't really work like that for example in uttar pradesh the yogi adityanath government has said that the labor reforms are for 3 years now you are saying we want to move manufacturing out of china but any company even if they seriously consider coming to india mr chandraji banerji will expect continuity uh, enforcement of contract is one of the biggest problems of doing business in india now you say come invest in 3 years later god alone knows whether that law will be there flexible labor laws will be there or will we be back to uh, So what the country gave me rabul sir i made a point that the 3 year the 3 year timeline will help existing units in india to get going and beyond the 3 years to attract investment we will have to show that these labor changes are kicking in within 3 years how important mr banerji are land and labor reforms at this moment i mean ordinarily how important are they super important at this moment given the magnitude of the crisis that we are dealing with how important are these sir so at this point in time it is it is it is it is also super important because uh, it, is, it is it is now that you need to kick start the economy in domestically you need to see that people are are uh, are facilitated when you are really looking at uh, ease of doing business in india and there is a huge opportunity which the prime minister talked about yesterday and and, and we know about a huge opportunity which is there in india's way Uh, when uh, when capital is looking for uh, uh, looking for a place uh, and india stands very high and if there are certain reforms land labor uh, reforms are one competitiveness by lowering our logistics cost cost of capital whole lot of things actually which can be done and i think all of this can be done uh, effectively one point which is very very going to be very important as we go along is going to be that much of these reforms as you will see are in the states of india and it is these states of india which is going to draw uh, foreign capital and yes of course a uh, 3 years is 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 a time frame but yes a, a foreign capital foreign capital will definitely foreign and domestic capital would re really look at continuity and a permanency in a change uh, in, in the change of no, uh, remember uh, central of to this idea the reform of pulling so, manufacturing away from china is the hope that companies want to leave china there's an article that came in fortune magazine which quotes the american chamber of commerce in shanghai which says that 70% of the american companies they spoke to in china said they had no intentions of leaving and if you think of what's happened post this pandemic it's china that's got its manufacturing up and running far faster than europe the united states and india therefore the message could potentially be jai pan you know you are safer your manufacturing lines are safer if you are producing in china rather than moving out so how are we so certain that companies are desperate the, uh, president trump is asking for it prime minister modi is asking for it but we don't know at this moment whether companies are actually itching to get out of china like we are hoping and that we can bring them to india rahul the simple answer to this question is currently it may look like it is safer to manufacture in china but the bigger question is can they export from china and where will the market go because the globalization that the world had seen in the decades after world war 2 uh, has started changing in the last few years and we were on the wrong side of the curve when the world was opening up and we should not be on the wrong side of the curve 
when the world is developing much more self-reliance. Everybody is doing it. America is doing it. Other countries are doing it. And China itself uh, doesn't allow our pharmaceuticals, for instance, into China. So the reality is, uh, it's not just that manufacturing in China has to make sense. It has to make sense that they can access markets everywhere else. And to access the Indian market, the boost that has been given to local manufacturing today by these policy changes are going to matter quite a, quite a lot. Okay. Sanjay Kapoor, your sense on whether land labor reform at this moment will have the multiplier effect the government would hope, would it change the mind of you know, industrialists such as yourself to want to increase the investments in India or do you think the challenge right now is just survival, you can make it easier to survive but we are not really looking to grow, we would rather just live through this crisis first. Well, I think the Prime Minister said something very appropriate in terms of creating local demand and creating companies or make in India sort of companies for the world, for the global uh, manufacturing world. We are sitting in a great position, especially, especially in the automotive component industry, to create a manufacturing hub in India. Uh, you know, any kind of labor, land reform will give a great boost and a great, a great confidence for companies to come into India. I think one of the great things is ease of doing business. One of the things that companies look for to come into any country, if you've seen country, uh, companies go to Vietnam, Mexico, Thailand, it's been the ease of doing business. I think once the ease of doing business is relaxed, is, is, is more conducive, uh, more companies will set up manufacturing. I think we but need Chandra to plan the ease of doing business, make in India is virtually the same thought as uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat. What's changed? The government's been talking about all of this for six years. Many of it has been spoken of but not implemented fully even though attempts have been made. What do you think is different this time? Are you getting a sense that there's something different? What is it different this time? I think uh, there, are, uh, there is one thing which is uh, very, very important. I think now where we cannot uh, delay this any further, number one, which, which is quite clear, it's clear in the political system, it is clear very much uh, in the bureaucratic system, it's obviously understood and appreciated and demanded for by the industry. The second part is, like you started states talking about it, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh talk, started talking about it and taking that step to, yes, we will. So I think there are uh, so I think there are uh, going forward from the central level uh, to the state level, where states also seeing an advantage of making this happen. Is, uh, these two are very big signals, and I think that's the reason why I'm hopeful now that uh, 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 this crisis itself uh, can uh, can uh, and if we want to find a solution to this crisis, this is a very very important and a necessary condition for us to get out of it. Venu Srinivasan, the sanctimony of contracts, that there is a contract which a government has signed with a domestic company or an international company that that is honored is one of the biggest reasons why international business is distrustful if India they've burned their fingers too many times over. What do you think can be done? Because a lot of it is judicial, some of it is uh, legislative, but what can be done to ensure that while we address the issue of land and labor, we also look at the sanctity of contracts? I think Prime Minister did mention liquidity, labor, land and laws. The entire judicial system is clogged. I think fortunately due to arbitration some of it has definitely been solved. Many recent cases have gone to arbitration even against the government or between private parties to Singapore or London and been solved quickly. But retrospective legislation is certainly an issue with international confidence. So we should make a public declaration that we will not do retrospective legislation. We will also set up business courts where containment of delays will not be allowed, where adjournments will not be given at a drop of a hat and time bound judgments must come. If this is not done, you cannot climb the ladder of ease of doing business and come to international standards. Maybe Narendran, how do you think we should approach the idea of uh, enforcing the validity of a contract? Because see what happened in Andhra Pradesh, the government changed, Jagan Reddy came in, he didn't care about what uh, Chandrababu Naidu had done with the Singapore investors, the Singapore investors ended up burning their fingers and promising never to come back. How do we ensure when we are dealing with, why I am focusing on this is, while we are dealing with other problems, can we find a way of resolving this as well? Well, it is certainly a big problem and this has come back to us uh, in multiple interactions with foreign investors. They say we can live with a higher cost of doing business, but we need, uh, you know, comfort that the contracts will be honored. Because once you commit an investment, they don't want the policies to change. 
So this is an issue. I think as a country, we are recognizing the criticality of this problem, and we are realizing that this is what is uh, making people reluctant to come and invest in India. I hope we learn by example. I hope uh, you know uh, at the national level and at the state level we honor the contracts because uh, otherwise that very quickly goes as an investment destination. So it's a very important part of the journey which I think we should cover. Jay Panda, what more should we expect? Uh, in the second, third, and the fourth tranche, give us an. You, you work closely with the economic minds of the government. What should we expect in, in show number two, three, and four? Look, I think uh, enough hints have been given by both the prime minister and the uh, and the finance minister. Uh, not just the economy, but the other pillars are going to be the infrastructure, uh, technology-driven systems changes. The prime minister emphasised that that we cannot continue to operate on 20th century systems and uh, demography and demand. So we will see lots happening on that. But I want to compliment you Raul for, uh, for reiterating the enforcement of contracts issue because that is uh, uh, something that we need to work on. Although we made stunning improvements on the World Bank's ease of doing business index, the one thing that is holding us back is the enforcement of contracts and that's almost entirely within the judiciary. There are a lot of things that uh, can be tried. The late Arun Jaitley, as law minister at the beginning of this century, had started fast track courts who were giving lots of much much faster results than the normal courts, but many states stopped funding them after the first initial funding was over. So we need to champion such measures such as fast track courts and such as reforms in the okay. system. So that there will be those who will ask whether this is the right time to push through land and labor reform. To them I say, there is never a good time, there is never a right time. If the ship is coasting along just smoothly, there will never be political appetite. In India, we tend to push through big reform only when there is a sense that the ship is sinking. And therefore, even if the benefit is not visible immediately, pushing through structural reform can possibly create conditions which can propel India's growth as we bounce back from this pandemic. What's been announced so far is promising. We look forward to seeing what other announcements are made by the government in part 2, 3 and 4. For the time being, Vainu Srinivasan, TV Narendran, Shrikan Somani, Jai Panda, Chandrajit Banerjee and Sanjay Kapoor for joining us on this big India Today virtual brainstorm on ways of fighting the economic virus. We are dealing with the health crisis, we are focusing on that relentlessly here on in India Today. We are also figuring out how to ventilate the Indian economy and bring the economy out of ICU and the life support that it's on currently. We'll keep tracking this. Thank you for tuning in to the news track tonight. Rajdeep Sarvisa is up next with the news today. Sanjeev Goenka Group, Growing Legacies.